नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 38 इन आवर कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिज़ाइन एंड एज यू आर वेल अवेयर दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड द डिस्कशन ऑन एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक और एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टेक्निक विच इज़ यूज फॉर वर्क स्टडी दैट इज़ वर्क मेजरमेंट एंड करंटली वी आर इन द एट्थ वीक ऑफ आवर डिस्कशन एंड इन एट्थ वीक इन द वेरी फर्स्ट सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बेसिक्स और द फंडामेंटल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ वर्क मेजरमेंट दैट वाई डू वी नीड टू time the work why do we need to find out a standard time for the work what can be the uses of this time that we have set up or that we have found out using different techniques so we have found out that there is a need to establish a standard time for doing each and every task each and every operation and that time is very very useful to us for establishing the other decision making in the organization or for establishing the salaries or for finding out the tasks to be assigned to a person or to enter into a contract with our vendors that at what particular moment of time or at on which particular date or in which particular month we will be able to deliver the consignment or the agreed upon material so it is an important we can say topic which helps us in doing the overall planning of our operations in a much better manner and in work measurement we have seen two sessions the very first session was related to the util utility or the importance of work measurement in the next session we have seen that what are the various techniques that are used for finding out the standard time for different operations or tasks or elements or jobs and in that we have seen that there are direct methods of finding out the standard time as well as there are indirect methods in which we use the previously available data for synthesizing the standard time with the help of different types of motions of the body or the operations that are being done for example the total work is divided into three or four operations so what we can do we can try to look up for the data for these four operations that what type of data is already available with us now whatever is already available we will take that data and then for the operations for which the data is not available we can do the direct observation or direct measurement and then synthesize by adding all the information available and find out the standard time for doing that task so in the previous session we have seen different techniques and on your screen now you can have an idea that what are these techniques the first one was the time study that we usually do with the help of stopwatch then the synthetic data technique work sampling technique in which a operator can time number of workers he will go to the shop floor at random intervals of time and then he will try to see whether the worker is performing the task or he is idle and also he will see he or she will see that whether the machine is working or it's in a idle state so accordingly then based on this statistical data that is collected we are able to find out the standard time so we can have a direct measurement using time study we can use the synthetic data then work sampling then predetermined motion time systems like motion time measurement mtm is given here and finally the analytical estimation we have also seen that historical data sometimes is available can also be used for finding out the standard time for doing the work now these are all 1 2 3 4 and 5 techniques which are used for work measurement now what are the specific application areas for these techniques we can see the time study is used for short cycle repetitive jobs and widely used for direct work so which is important that because here in this case we will directly time a operator will be told that we are going to note down the time that you are taking for performing this task and then once the operator starts working we will use a stopwatch to find out how much time he or she is taking to complete the task so therefore the word direct is coming into picture here because we do the direct measurement of the operator also i must tell it is a continuous measurement of the time so we will not stop in between as in case of work sampling in case of work sampling the worker will uh, sorry the time study analyst will go to the worker and see whether he is working or not working so he will not continuously observe the worker using the stopwatch he will just take a data that whether the worker is working or not working so there the measurement is not direct but in this case where we are using a stopwatch the measurement is a direct measurement whereas 
the synthetic data can be used for short cycle repetitive jobs work sampling can be used for long cycle jobs because here the person is operating he is doing his work independently the time study analyst will go there and try to find out whether he is working or not and he can do this work sampling on not a single worker but he can do it for a combination of worker or for a team of workers also suppose there are 10 people working on the shop floor he can go and take the reading for all the 10 workers that whether how many of them are working how many of them are idle maybe five are working five are idle he will note down worker one working worker two idle worker three working so in that form he can uh, synthesize or he can analyze the data at a later stage first the data collection is important then work sampling is used for long cycle job as well as for heterogeneous operations so wherever in case of short cycle repetitive jobs time study is more relevant heterogeneous jobs work sampling is more relevant and some of you may be getting confused maybe that where which method will be used so we have around 3 weeks of discussion focused on work measurement only so we will see each one of this technique with the applications in the form of numericals as well as the specific application areas where these techniques can be employed so today maybe we are just revising what we have covered in the previous session we have seen that all all these techniques can be used to find out the standard time for performing the work then the pmts that is predetermined motion time system it is used for manual operations confined to one work center similarly the analytical estimation can be used for short cycle non repetitive jobs so synthetic data is used for short cycle repetitive jobs and and analytical estimation is used for short cycle non repetitive so this is the major difference repetitive and non repetitive so now depending upon the application why this slide we are showing here because target for today is that we want to see the steps involved in work measurement now for the steps we have different techniques so different techniques may have a little variation related to the steps that we follow for establishing the standard time so here we just want to revise that what are the various techniques and then when we go forward when we see the steps involved maybe we will focus on the most common procedure that is adopted for finding out the standard time which may be related to more with direct measurement of the operator and finding out the time required by that by that operator to perform the task but yes we have different techniques as listed on your screen which can be used for finding out the standard time then the units of measurement are also given for time study centiminute centiminute minutes tmu then minutes in case of analytical estimation now depending upon the type of work that we are timing or the type of work that we are trying to set the standard time for we can use the different time units also and these time units we will specify when we will go to the each and every technique that is used for work measurement so when we talk about pmts we will discuss what is tmu and why it is used for setting or why it is used as a time unit for pmts system so this is the summary of what we have already covered in the previous two sessions in our session number 36 we have just introduced the concept of work measurement scope and objectives of work measurement some application areas and then we have seen what are the various techniques these are the techniques which we have covered in the previous session today i think in the first 7 or 8 minutes we have just revised yeah, what are the various techniques now coming on to the steps procedures of time study it is easy if we follow the procedure systematically if we follow the procedure religiously we will be able to find out the standard time for performing the task now what are the steps or the procedure of time study step 1 is select the work to be studied define the objective of the study so the first you can say step is as in case of method study what do we do i have taken an example that for example a time study or a work study analyst goes to an organization and he is tasked with improving 
the productivity of the organization he can definitely use both these techniques he can use the method study technique also he can use the work measurement technique also now what is expected out of him he will try to he will try to find out he will try to select that which is the work that i must improve or what is the procedure or technique of doing work which i must improve or i must focus in the very beginning so first is selection that which particular department which particular shop which particular workstation must be focused for improving the way the work is being done also we can select that where do we see that ineffective time is more and that work we can select that here we feel that lot of time is being wasted now how this can be avoided let us find out that what can be the right method in combination to that the right time that must be utilized or used for performing this task and how much percentage saving can be accounted for by the changed method in terms of the time required for doing the task so both of these techniques the method study and the work measurement go hand in hand as we have seen in the very first session in week 8 so when we introduced the concept of work measurement in that case we have seen that work measurement will help us in doing a better decision making related to the various operations involved in the organization so the important point here is that identification of the work which we want to time or the identification of the work for which we want to set the time standard is the first step that has to be followed for work measurement and then we have to define the objective of the study the objective can be defined in a very crisp and concrete manner in a very very maybe brief uh, description we can give for example to find out the standard time for drilling in 8 mm thick stainless steel plate maybe this is a very very concrete definition of doing the time study defining the objective of the study now what is expected thickness of the sheet is also specified material of the sheet is also specified maybe we can even specify the diameter of the hole also in defining the objective so we what we need to do there is operation being done and we want to find out the standard time for doing that operation so that is the first step related to the setting up of the standard time or for performing the work measurement study now for selecting the job for time study what must be kept in mind the reasons for which time study may be done maybe why we have to identify the job for which we want to find out the standard time now how to identify that job the job in question is new so it may be a new job we don't have any time standard available for that so there is no synthetic data available or not previously carried out so we may have a completely new job or there is a job which is being done in the organization but the time standard is not available for that job so that job can be identified and selected for doing the time study change in the method of existing time standard so if there is a change in the method again we again we will need to carry out the time study complaint received from the workers or unions regarding the time standard so there is already a time standard existing but the workers and the union are not satisfied they want maybe in order to deliver the quality or in order to provide proper rest to the workers between the work they are doing they want the time must again be studied and it must be regulated for ensuring the safety as well as the well being of the worker so if there is a complaint received from the workers or unions regarding the time standard again you need to do the time study for so you identify that job and you can perform a time study again by thinking of maybe relaxing some of the allowances that that are usually added for finding out the standard time and you need not worry we will come to the allowances also what are the different types of allowances why they are given why they are why they are important so here just you can remember that we can work on our methodology that we have used for setting up the standard time and try to tweak it slightly so that the workers feel well or workers feel satisfied and the unions are also happy and the workers 
contribute towards the productivity of the organization. In many cases, a particular operation may become a bottleneck operation, which holds a number of subsequent activities. So, if there is a bottleneck operation, we can again try to find out the time required or the standard time required for performing that operation, so that we can balance our line. We can stop the uh, holding up of the subsequent activity. We can avoid the holding up of the subsequent activities by doing a time study on that operation. For example, suppose it is a slow machine, it is holding up, there is a lot of work in process waiting to be processed on that particular machine. We can do a time study and find out that what can be the standard time for doing a one work cycle or one operation on this machine. And if we are able to find out that work time, we can very easily try to balance by putting a number of machines in series, so in, in maybe uh, a line, so that there is work in process is reduced and the subsequent activities are not hanged up or not held up because of this particular uh, bottleneck operation. So, once we know that this machine, this is the capacity, this many number of parts it can produce in one hour, accordingly we can see that how many machines must be put in order to balance the production line. Change in the management policy regarding how time standards are used. So, as we have already seen in our session number 36 that it is very very important for the management to know that how much work can be accomplished by n number of men and women or n number of operators working for the organization. Now, the management may change their policy and because of the change in the policy, we may require the time standards to be calculated again and therefore, we need to see we can select those particular operations for which the management wants uh, analysis to be done. So, here we are getting some hints, we are getting some leads that these are the areas in which we can do our time study. Now, general guidelines for selecting the jobs, so these are the previous slide has given us some hints that these are the areas, maybe management wants to change the policy, there are complaints, there are complaints by the workers and the unions or there is a new method which has been introduced. So, these are some hints which are giving us an idea that this is the direction in which we must move and we must first focus on these operations. But here we have put them in a very, very concrete form, general guidelines for selecting the job for time study, bottleneck operations, repetitive jobs, jobs using a greater deal of manual labor, then jobs with longer cycle times, selections, departments frequently working over time or this is maybe this may not be the selections, it may be the sections sections, departments frequently working over time. So, if the maybe let us focus on the last one, if constantly there is a department in which the people have to work over time, it is really important to find out that whether the workload is higher or the rate at which the workers are working is not standard or there can be some improvements in the procedure, so that the productivity or the labor productivity may be improved. So, that is important, we can focus on departments where people are usually working over time to find out that what can be the standard time for performing a particular task and on top of that all are the technical factors like the bottleneck operations already discussed, repetitive jobs, same job being done again and again, we can definitely try to find out the standard time for doing that job, jobs using greater deal of manual labor because it is easier to find out the time required for performing a task on a fully automatic machine. But it is sometimes difficult where wherever the manual intervention is there for manufacturing or for fabrication or processing. So, there we may definitely like to do the time study analysis. So, these are some of the points which will guide us that how to select. And another thing is just a standard, because once you want you know a particular technique, it is difficult to identify where I must focus my efforts. Once you are able to identify the area of improvement, then the rest things are maybe kind of 
uh, run of the mill only it is kind of standard uh, approach only so your creativity your intelligence your brilliance comes in identification only that you are able to identify a situation where your efforts are going to bear fruits for the organization so first is identification you have identified the things that here if i put my efforts it will lead to benefit for the organization automatically the other things will follow now let us see we have focused i think much more time on the selection only now the rest of the things quickly we will try to wind up second is obtain and record all the information available about the job the operator and the working condition so three things record all the observation regarding what about the job then about the operator then about the working conditions likely to affect the time study so there are three stakeholders here the job being done or the method being followed for doing the job the second is the operator who is performing the task or the job third one is the working conditions provided for him or her to perform the task so we have to record all possible information now what type of information all the relevant and necessary information regarding the method which i have already told operator and the details of the working conditions are recorded the accuracy of time standards depends upon the correctness of the method employed by the operator so therefore we have already studied or we have already discussed method study so in method study we try to develop one best method of performing the job or the task and when we do the work measurement or time study the job must be performed as per the standardized method which is documented installed and maintained in the organization so it is very important so wrong methods should not be timed so we must always try to find out the best method and then try to find out the standard time for performing the task using that best method details of the operator is essential to be recorded before starting the actual time study so we if you see we already know that when we are trying to find out the standard time we need to find time for the worker who is qualified who is skill who skilled who is averagely experienced so experience skill and qualification are important to for selecting a worker for whom we are going to find out the standard time information to enable the identification details such as part number and name machine number speed feed materials etc must be there so we will see in time study equipment when we will see the time study uh, form in there we will see on the top we have to fill all this information so we have to get all possible information related to the work the operator and the conditions working conditions are under which an operator carries out the job like temperature dust smoke vibrations noise etc these have to also to be taken into account working position such as standing standing sitting bending weights handling protective clothing etc must also be taken into account so when we are doing the time study we must go into all the minutest of detail related to the work the condition the operator the part number the machine number all possible information must be recorded then step 3 is the breaking down the operation into the elements and an element is a distinct part of the specified activity now here you can see maybe this is stitching of a shirt one needle locks a stitch machine with an automatic thread trimmer then knit shirt center pla uh, placket then lock stitch but button holding machine so for stitching a t-shirt you can see there are number of operations which have need to be done so we need to break down so this is an example of breaking down the operation into individual elements so these are the various elements element number 1 this can be element number 2 then maybe similar and there will be sequence of elements which will lead to the completion of the whole operation now breaking the jobs in job into element which we have already seen in the previous with the help of stitching of a shirt or a t-shirt once the study person has recorded all the information about the operation and is satisfied that the method being used is the correct one or the best possible in the prevailing circumstances it is broken down into 
elements. So, this is what we have already covered in the previous slide. Now, from here on we move on to breaking down the total operation into the individual elements. Now, what are the elements? Element is a distinct part selected for convenience of observation, measurement and analysis. So, we break down the overall operation into individual work element. Now, what is the element? Element is a distinct part of the work which is selected for convenience for which we can easily find out the time observation we can observe it distinctly distinctively and measurement and analysis so we find it for the convenience of observation i think i must put one number here these are the objective observation measurement and analysis so we want to break down the overall operation for the convenience of three things. We must be able to observe it properly. We must be able to record the time because we will see in our subsequent lectures what are the different types of uh, recording instruments which are used for recording the time. So, there has to be a least count for that instrument and th there has to be a breakdown of the operation into the elements and the element must be such that we are able to record the time for that element using the equipment available with us. So, we have to divide the overall work into the individual elements which we can observe, which we can measure and which we can analyze. A work cycle is a sequence of elements. Now, the overall work is divided into the elements. Now, a work cycle is a sequence of elements. What are these elements? These elements are written here, which are required to perform a job or yield a unit of production and the sequence may sometimes include occasional elements also. So, many times there may be some occasional elements which are not a part of our standard procedure or standard work cycle, but may be for some of the work cycles these occasional elements may creep in because of certain reasons beyond the operator's control. Now, a detailed breakdown into elements is necessary. Why do we need to break down the work into the elements? To ensure the productive work or effective time is separated from unproductive activity or ineffective time which we want to avoid. We want to focus on the effective time only. To permit the rate of working to be assessed more accurately then would be possible if the assessment were made over a complete cycle. So, it is also possible that if we want we do not divide the work into the individual elements as taken an example of a shirt stitching of a shirt. Now, we try to divide it into individual elements for doing the micro analysis. We can also start, start the timing when the worker starts stitching the shirt. He can use his own procedure whatever comes or right to him or whatever he feels right. And when he has completely stitched the shirt and hanged it in the cupboard, then only we can say now okay, now he has taken this much time. But that may not yield good results. We would like what we would like? We would like to see that among the various elements which are adding up to the stitching up of the shirt, which is the element which takes more time, which is the element which takes less time, which is the element which can be combined with another element or there can be equipment which can help to do two of elements simultaneously thus saving the time. So, micro detailing will help us giving us hints that these are the ineffective times and can easily be avoided. So, we break down in order to ensure that productive work is separated from unproductive activity to permit the rate of working to be assessed more accurately then would be possible if the assessment were made on a overall complete cycle to enable the different types of elements to be identified and distinguished so that each element is given an appropriate treatment which I have already highlighted to enable elements involving a high degree of fatigue to be isolated and to make the allocation of fatigue allowance more accurate. So, the elements involving a high degree of fatigue can also be identified with the help of breaking down of the overall job into the individual elements and these uh, elements with high degree of fatigue we can focus on them and try to identify means and mechanisms to lower down this fatigue or we can give them specific treatment and add certain fatigue allowances 
the allowances we will cover in our subsequent sessions. Now, step 4 is we now what we have done just briefly revise what we have done we have identified the job then we have broken down the job into the individual elements and we have understood why do we need to break down the job into individual element measure the time by means of a stopwatch taken by the operator to perform each element of the operation now there are few stopwatches shown here and one digital one is shown here so we will focus these in our next session that what are the different types of stopwatches so one once we have record once we have broken down the overall work into the individual elements we will find out time required for each element then when we measure the time for each element there are two principal methods of timing with the stopwatch what are these uh, these elements now these elements are cumulative timing in which watch runs continuously throughout the study that is it is started at the beginning of the first element of the first cycle to be timed and is stopped until the whole study is completed so it is very very clear cumulative you start for the first element and then continue this till the end of the work cycle cumulative in which watch runs continuously throughout the study it is started at the beginning of the first element so when the first element is starting you will start your watch of the first cycle it is not stopped until the whole study is completed so that is once you start it will keep on recording that time at the end of each element the watch reading is recorded and individual element times are obtained by successive subtraction from the study subtraction after the study is completed now for each and every element you can find out the time from the total time that you have recorded so again i am reading at the end of each element the watch reading is recorded and individual element times are obtained by sub successive subtractions after the study is completed whereas in flyback timing the hands of the stopwatch are returned to zero at end of each element whereas in previous case cumulative timing is taken so cumulative timing means that continuously at the start of the first element you will start and then after the end of the work cycle you will stop but here the hands of the stopwatch are returned to zero at the end of each element and allowed to start immediately the time for each element is obtained directly whereas in case of the cumulative timing we are doing success successive subtractions to find out the time for each element but here it is obtained directly so with this we close down the today's session the time is over i wanted to cover the complete steps involved but at least we know now by uh, the end of today's session that we are going to record the time directly using a stopwatch in the next session we will start with the subsequent steps once we have noted down the time for each element using the direct observation what we can do with this time and how the standard time is found out so with next session we will also focus on the different types of time study equipment thank you